guys welcome back to the channel today we are jumping into the cut tab now i gotta be honest i am not the biggest fan of the cut tab generally i'm jumping into the edit tab and that's where i'm doing all of my editing for my videos but i know a lot of you guys use the cut tab and there are a lot of good updates here in davinci resolve 18.5 beta 3 just came out today the day i'm filming this video so there is a lot of good stuff in there we're going to jump into the cut tab and just run over some of these cool new features here in 18.5 so let's just jump on the computer and uh, we'll check this out let's go Jumping into DaVinci Resolve here, we're in the cut tab. Let's talk about some new features here in 18.5 Beta 3. So the first one we want to talk about here is a couple new icons here in our toolbar. We've got timeline options. And if we click on there, we can see we've got things like ripple on, where we can ripple delete our clips, we can trim to audio, display the clip names, which comes in real handy if you want to know what clip you're working on. I'm going to turn that on. Uh, you can display the clip status, minimize subtitle tracks, snap to different items with your clips. You got the fixed playhead and also the boring detector. The next icon that we have here is called the timeline actions. And when we click on that, we see we've got different things we can use to uh, work within our timeline, right? So we can create our subtitles from audio, which is new the new feature here in DaVinci Resolve 18.5 Studio, right? We can detect scene cuts. We can add video tracks and audio tracks as well as subtitle tracks right here in the cut tab. We can split clips, join and match clips, add markers, and set color and marker, uh, set marker colors. We also have another icon here that is called edit actions. And if we go ahead and click on that drop down, we can trim to the start of the playhead, trim to the end, which is like a, a ripple cut and delete. Um, and you can also resync your clips up. So you're going to find a lot of tools in these three uh, icons right here that you're going to find very handy when you're working in the cut tab. So one of the great features we have now here in DaVinci Resolve 18.5 is that ability to create the auto captions, which I made a video on doing it in the edit tab. But now you can also do it right here in the cut tab. Pretty easy. You want to come on up to the middle icon here, Timeline Actions, and you can create subtitles from audio. Just go ahead and click on that. Select your language, which is also new here in the Beta 3 version of 18.5. We have all different languages you can pick. I'm going to go English because that's the only language I know. I'm going to leave all the rest of the defaults. Go ahead and click Create. DaVinci Resolve is going to do its thing. Create those subtitles and captions for us. Put them right on the video. Boom, here we go. They're there. And if I play through a little bit of the video, this is uh, what it looks like. We can see them right here on the screen. It's looking good. Okay, so there you go. You see, it popped them right in there for us. So really handy feature. A lot of people ask for it. And you ask for multiple languages, which now we have here in the beta 3 update of 18.5. And it's going to be in the full release whenever that comes out. So another really handy feature that's here, it's in this menu, the edit actions, is the trim to start playhead and trim to end playhead, which is essentially making a cut and ripple deleting either everything before the cut or after the cut. For example, in my timeline here, if I just come to right here, let's say I want to delete everything on the end. I have a keyboard shortcut set up to do it, but if you don't, you just come to this guy right here, the edit actions button, and you can say trim end to playhead. Click on that and you can see it's going to make a cut and ripple delete everything after it. Making a cut and being able to ripple delete the rest of the video from either the beginning or the end, depending on which way you want to go, really helps speed up your workflow. I use it all the time and I actually assigned a keyboard shortcut of the Q and W keys to make that happen. But you can do it right here in the cut tab by just clicking on the uh, edit actions icon there and choosing the option in the menu. Now, another really cool feature here is our ability to move or roll and cut the audio separate from the video. Check it out. In my timeline here, I can hover over my clip, get this icon, and I can extend my clip out or back, right? But let's say I didn't want to do both the video and the audio. Maybe I'm trying to make a J cut or an L cut, and I want to do just the audio, right? If I hover my icon or my mouse down a little bit lower, we're going to get this icon, and now I can click, hold, and drag and just adjust the audio. Pretty sweet. It's nice to have that feature in the cut tab to just help us make our cuts and overlap things a little bit quicker and easier. Now, sometimes when we're editing our video in the timeline, we need to make those clips a little bit taller or bigger so we can see what's going on a little bit better. And now we can do that right here in the cut tab. So if we click on our track and we look at this icon right here, if I click on it, you can see it's going to make the track smaller. And now our audio is really squished down, right? As an audio guy, like I like to see those waveforms. I want to see them bigger, right? So if we click on that icon, it's going to extend out 
the uh, waveforms there, their clips, and make it a little bit bigger, a little bit easier for us to see. So I like that we now have that feature and that option here in the cut tab to be able to see our tracks a little bit larger. Another little handy tool here is that the uh, indicator, the smart indicator right here has uh, gotten a little bit of an improvement. It'll move up and down the timeline and you can see it's actually highlighting the clip uh, the, or the cut right here on the clips all by itself. I'm not doing that. That's not part of my screen recording. DaVinci Resolve is doing that and saying, hey, here's a cut. Uh, maybe you want to do something here. So that's going to help you out with that smart indicator, being able to move around the timeline a little bit more and highlight things for you just to help you edit your videos a little bit easier. Here's a cool little trick here. If you wanted to make a cut and you didn't want to ripple delete everything, but maybe you want to leave a gap, right? We want to leave the space, but delete the clip. We can actually do that right here in the cut tab now. So looking at my timeline, I've got a cut right here. And let's say that I wanted to make another cut where my playhead is and I wanted to delete everything in between, but I wanted to leave a gap there. I didn't want it to ripple delete and close the gap. Now there is a keyboard shortcut to do this, but I have updated some of my keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna show you where it is in the menu. So if you just put your playhead where you want to make the cut, we're gonna come on up to trim. And right here, we have trim start and trim end. So you can see there's the two keyboard shortcuts that I've got. Uh, yours may be different, but it's gonna tell you what they are right here. So if I do trim end, it's gonna delete the clip, but it's gonna leave the gap there, right? It's not gonna ripple delete and close everything down for us. So that's pretty handy there. Um, and it's nice to have the option to be able to do that here in the cut tab. Another cool feature is if you're working with multicam clips and you've got two clips and maybe they're out of alignment for some reason, it's gonna give you an indicator and say, hey, these clips seem like they're out of alignment. Do you want us to fix it? And it can automatically realign those clips for you. I don't have an example of that, but if you've got that situation, uh, you can give it a try and you should see a little indicator that you can click on the screen or on the clips to help line those guys back up. So pretty handy tool to have right here in the cut tab. Another handy update here in the cut tab is the ability to access your favorite transitions. That's transitions that you've clicked a little star next to and you've made them a favorite. For example, looking on the screen, if I hover over an effect, you see that little star. Well, if I click on that star, it's now in my favorites list, right? So you can access it quick and easy. So in my timeline here, let's say I put my playhead right here. I wanna add in a transition and we can click on this guy right here, which by default is smooth cut. However, if we right click on here, we now have access to anything that we've made our favorite. So any of our favorites transitions, you can see I have a custom slide up and slide down that I use all the time, as well as the zoom in that I just clicked to add to my favorite. So you can click any one of those and boom, it's gonna apply that to your clips and it's gonna put on that favorites transition that you wanna use. If you just wanna use the standard default, you can right click on here, go back to smooth cut, boom, there you go, you can add in the smooth cut. Really handy, just little quality of life things that help speed up your workflow here in the cut tab. Another really cool tool here that I like is being able to export a frame right here from the cut tab. You don't have to jump into the color tab, save it as a still and do all that. Check this out. So in DaVinci Resolve, I'm on my timeline here. I'm just on a random frame. And if I wanna export this as a still or as an image, I can come to file. I'm gonna come down to export. And we've got right here, current frame as a still. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. DaVinci Resolve is gonna ask you where you wanna save it, go ahead and save it. Then when you open up your file, boom, there you are. Maybe you're trying to make a thumbnail or something and you're using DaVinci Resolve to do it. Boom, you've got your image or your screenshot or your still uh, as a JPEG right here. And you can bring it into you know whatever program you want, Photoshop, Canva, whatever it might be to go ahead and you know create a thumbnail. Or maybe you just need a still for something in your video. Really quick and easy, you can do it in the cut tab and the edit tab. You don't have to jump into the color tab to do it anymore. I like that a lot. And one cool thing is notice it did not put the subtitles on there. If I look back in DaVinci Resolve here, the subtitles are on the screen, but when you grab that still, the subtitles are not baked into that JPEG file. So really handy. That's a feature that I use all the time. So that's just a small sample of some of the cool features here in the cut tab. Like I said, I don't use the cut tab that much, but I do want to get in here and use it a little bit more. And I do have a little project that I'm going to be working on to uh, just kind of work in the cut tab a little bit and see how it goes. I'm going to film it and put it out there for you guys, just so you can uh, watch me struggle and see how I try to figure out how to edit a video in the cut tab when I'm primarily uh, used to editing in the edit tab. So there you go, cut tab. It's pretty sweet. If you use it, there's some nice updates here for you.